Welcome in. It's Thanksgiving week. Glad to have you here. Thank you for coming to the Jim Jackson Show. Please follow me at Jim Jackson Show IG, also on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, or wherever you download your podcast. And as promised, because it is holiday week, Thanksgiving, part two, part two of my interview with my guy, close friend of mine, like a brother, Mr. D. Nice. It was, you know, a year ago, and it was the 50th year anniversary of hip hop -hop, and all these things were going on, but yet there was a void of my man D at these events, at these, I mean, that he should have been a part of. Yeah, no, for sure. And for you, how the, the feeling of not being involved in that, because you were a part of the golden generation. Yeah. What did you take from that? Wow. Um, um, well, there was still like a part of me that was a little um, angry. I'm not going to lie. It was definitely my feelings over it mm-hmm. um, because I'd been a part of hip hop, you know, since I was 16 years old. So I'm watching all my friends at, you know, my friends performing at Yankee Stadium or my friends performing. But then the, the next lesson that was learned was that what's for you is for you. You know, a but that's lot of, hard. That is That's hard. hard, D. But I learned it because, yo, Jesse Collins and Dion ended up producing, you know, the 50th anniversary of Hip Hop Special on CBS and then gave me my own slot, you know, with like me in, in, in Kick Capri or, you know what I mean? Or then I ended up, you know, um, doing the 50th anniversary of Hip Hop at the vice president's house, you know, with me and Lil Wayne and mm-hmm. like, I mean, so I guess in a sense, I, I did participate in Hip Hop 50, but not in a way that I thought that I should have, because it would have been great to be around more of my friends from my generation, right. you know, to kind of be a part of that 50th anniversary in the Bronx. I'm from the Bronx. Bronx. I grew up one street away from Yankee Stadium. I'm BX all day. So it would have been great to to be able to, to be there. But I guess where I am in my life right now, man, it was it was equally gratifying, which the lesson was learned because I, I can't front and say that it was an easy lesson that was learned. It was hard for me because I was like, man, I mean, there's my man Dana Dane is there. Oh, man, Fat Joe's performing or this one and oh, MC Shan. Like, yo, I, I, I don't really get to see a lot of the crew from that I grew up with. But then on the flip side, I kind of represented my generation of hip hop in some kind of prestigious, you know, events and locations to be at the vice president's mm-hmm. house, to be able to represent my generation, you know, to be on CBS, to do this Grammy celebration, this tribute to hip hop. It was still great, man. What I love about you too, in your journey is that not only did you be able to experience a lot of these events and people and meeting and travel, but you got into photography to be able to capture a lot of these moments. Yeah. And even when it wasn't an event, you got into it and started to carry your camera with you all the time and just capture these great photos. How did you, what started you on that side of the, the table to, to begin in photography? Yeah, so when, when those BDP days, I always had a camera, and, but I was young. And back then we were only shooting film. There were no digital cameras available. Um, And I would take these, I would shoot these images. And then once I had the prints, I didn't care about the negatives, which is the craziest way of thinking. So I don't know where any of these negatives are. I don't know where, you know, 90% of the prints are like, and when the world stopped clapping for me, you know, I didn't have anything tangible to show like my family, like, Oh, you know, I'd seen the world Mm -hmm. at a young age. So I, I made it a promise to myself if I ever had a chance to travel the world again that I would always have a camera with me. And I ended up going to, um, once I started doing like web development, started a company, bought a camera. I went to school for photography, placed in New York. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I went to school for photography in New York City, a place called ICP. Um, learned how to shoot, learn how to process film. And then I kept the camera with me. And now, you know, because of that, I ended up shooting campaigns for Reebok to album covers from Carl Thomas mm. to, uh, you know, 
Feral Grey Monk. Goose campaign. Say it again. You said Feral Monk. You did yeah, that. Feral Kenny Monk. Lattimore. I mean, yeah, Kenny, Kenny Lattimore. Um, to I did a shoot. You know, shoots for Nike. Um, I I did a ne- America's Next Top Model. I was a guest photographer on the show, and but DJing took off at the same time as photography for me. So it was a lot easier for me to go out and shoot um, or to DJ a two-hour set because with the photography and doing those photo shoots, once you do a project, you're committed to that project. You know, you got to see it through. You got to see through the editing. So instead of doing that, I was like, man, I'm just going to just keep my camera with me and just I shoot one camera brand. You know, I mainly shoot Leica cameras and, you know, it's just my style of photography because the camera itself isn't intrusive. You know, it looks like doesn't look like the paparazzi, which right. I don't want to be. I still yeah. want people to be able to respect me, but respect me as a photographer, like the, the way you looked at James Vanderzee or the way you looked at Gordon Parks or Jim Marshall. It's kind of the right camera, the right images. And because of that, I'm always in the right room. People know I have my camera with mm-hmm. me. Sometimes I'll take a picture. Sometimes I won't. But people always allow me into these rooms, man. And and um, and I've been blessed. So I'm. I'm doing a show for 2025. Our Basel. Our Basel, just curing, curating everything right now. And um, yeah, man, that's that's the goal. That's the goal, man, to do my show during that time. So we got a couple, I think we got a couple images yes, sir. that you were able to take. And what's interesting too is that it, it captures like moments. And having that camera now, you don't know sometimes what you're going to yeah. shoot. But then you're able to... What what is that feeling when you know you have a scene that's set that says I got to get this? Well, sometimes it's like you could be in the moment, but my mind is like constantly going. Like one of the images that I um, oh, or like even like look at this one, this one here of Nas. You know, we were Nas and I. You know, he still has a Tennessee deal. I'm, I, you know, since moved on, and I'm a part of another company. Well. Are Actually, you, I'm a. You, I'm you a, are the company. I'm you, a part you, of. And the I'm cigars. One of, and the, and the, I'm one of the owners of a Come cognac club um, um, called Martin Gale. Yeah. But anyway, Nas and I were out in in Mexico, and we were just we were just hanging, walking by, walking down the beach, just talking. And I was, I had my camera with me. I was like, yo, let's take some pics. And like, even when you look at this picture, look at the bird flying there, bro. Like everything was <laughs> set up for the bird to be there, and you chose black and white. Why? I chose black because I, I just love black and white yeah. photography. You know, so I shot that with um with a, a black and white camera, like a monochrome. Um, yeah, man. I mean, I looked up with this shot, man. Nas is just super relaxed. The bird is killing me, though. I'm like, man, the timing of that was just perfect. So our listeners at home that are listening on YouTube, you will be able to see the images yeah. that, that we brought up here. This is a dope one. I think we have another one, too. What else do we have here? That uh, that comes up. But that just came about you walking in this one. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, this one was so dope. This one actually what's funny is 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 this was um so Q Tip and Questlove and Black Thought is my man too but Q Tip in particular man he is the reason why I started DJing because when my career when my rap career was over I wasn't really going out to parties mm-hmm. and one day Tip invited me out to his party and I was I just stood in front of the DJ booth all night and I couldn't believe that he was just he was just rocking playing everything from Blondie to Jay-Z. So Tip is like a, a, a real real source of inspiration for me. Um, and, and Amir, Questlove, man, that dude, you know, you talk about someone who knows their self-worth. When I didn't know mine, one Grammy event, I played no live, probably like for the weekend, I played oh, open for Sam Smith. I played Pharrell's party. I played Warner Brothers. You know, I, I mean, I had about seven or eight really, really, really big events, but this was all pre-COVID. This was just me doing it. And the last party of the weekend was Pharrell's Adidas party. And um, Questlove came in and, and he said, he was like, bro, you had the most amazing weekend for a DJ. He's like, but now you got to change your rate. You don't charge enough. And I'm like, nah, man, you got the Tonight Show, blah, blah, blah. He was like, no. You don't charge enough. Change your rate. You're probably going to lose gigs. You probably won't work a lot for six months. But you got to change your rate. And I did that. And no lie, I did not work for about six months. <laughs> 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 Nobody was hiring me. Right. Like, How much? How much? Right. Nah, we good. But you had to stay with it, though. I stayed with it. And the, the first client that 
that I, I remember the event, man. It was an Amazon event, and they came and they gave me everything that I asked for. And like I said, this was pre-COVID, so the number was still different. And that that I, I learned my self worth because of that. I, I learned that, and I owe that to Quest, man. Like the dude really gave me the best advice, and also I do I love watching him DJ because mm -hmm. between Q Tip and Quest, they play with this freedom, this freedom where they. You know, some people call it being eclectic, but I don't. It's like you find you find a rhythm that that kind of like, you know, stitches everything together yeah. and you play that way as opposed to playing based on genres. And those guys, including Jazzy Jeff, are really good at that, mm. of being, you know, black black people who just have a love for all music, you know, and because of that, it's like my life is better because I've watched those guys DJ. Well, but the, the funny part is, not funny, you talk about your self-worth and losing to gain. Yeah. First DJ Hollywood Bowl? Yep. First DJ at Carnegie Hall? So I would say first hip-hop hip kind of hip -hop, DJ. Hip-hop, yeah, DJ. Yeah. yeah, I don't want to take away from yeah. the EDM DJs right. that played it. But so, like, yeah. hip-hop side, that opened yep. up when Busta and, and Nas and everybody yep. else started performing there. Kennedy Center? Kennedy Center Opera House, first... Definitely first DJ to sell you, out. The you notice these first things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's a, there's a couple of good first things. That's what, so you take the playing in the White House, which is huge. You talk about these historic venues being the first to kind of do some of this. The success with the offsite stuff. The you talked about the cognac. We didn't even talk about the cigars and this. What's next, man? You know. Honestly, like I love we we talk about these things all the time, man. You know, and um, I I just love hospitality, you know. So my goal now is to build a hospitality business where you know we own hotels and restaurants, and you know I just recently invested invested in a restaurant that's going to be opening in um in Miami, mm -hmm. um, probably open around June, uh, and I'm I'm looking forward to that. That's my latest investment. You're stepping your toe into that. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm trying to use that as an a, a way to um a way to just kind of like learn more about the business. Then I'm also I also have um a plant a plant-based snack company that I just did a joint venture with. Um the company the 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 overall company is called Outstanding Foods. So I initially I had like shares of that company, but I wanted to do my own thing. So we just did our joint venture. So 2025 I'll have some D nice snacks out. No, you know. <laughs> hey, listen. Uh, you gotta get, you gotta bring them for the crew, man. You gotta bring your brother. <laughs> I'm like, hey, listen. I grew up eating bad snacks what? And, all day long, but I'm trying to bring some healthy snacks. Okay. You know, but I still kind of want a little bad flavor, though. I need some onion and garlic, whatever. <laughs> that you know, is... but that's that is um, that's that's where I am right now, man. And, and you know, the cognac is doing well. The cigar. You know, I'm probably going to do a new cigar deal. My deal with, with uh, Davidoff um, was a one-off. And we did, We, I mean, we went through like 7,000 7, boxes in like two weeks. Um, so, you know, kind of got my foot into the cigar game. And, you know, I'm just, just trying to do things that matters to me, man. It's amazing how the journey from the young kid who wanted to put music together to beginning to let his express who he is through yeah. his music through DJing. And then you talked about the clapping stopped, yeah. the reality of life hit. And then the, the different lives that we lead brought you to where you're at. Now it's even better because you're settled in and it's created a business platform outside of just music, but it was based around music. Yeah. And now that's expanding because you, we talk all the time. You travel not just nationally but internationally and meeting business people uh, from across the world that open up new horizons and yeah. doors and business opportunities that, hey, think about it. We never even think about until we get in those environments. And that just says a lot about who you are, where you're at in your life, man. And I tell you, from someone, when we go back to the mid to early 90s yes. of meeting to watch that whole transition, the humility that's still there to me, my brother, I say, I love you. Congratulations. Man. I love watching the journey and being a part of it from afar, you know, to touch it, to feel it, to see it. And I do know that is more to come. 
Yeah, man, I got more to share. Uh, but, you know, I do want to I want to say thank you to you, too, because you are from the moment that we met you. You listen, it didn't matter if people were clapping for me or not. You know what I mean? Like you you made me feel seen as a person, as a brother, you know, and then to become friends with you has been great. You know, to watch your life, you know, we became more friends after you played and to watch you navigate through life when people aren't clapping like that, yeah. you know, and to watch you do it and to watch you, you know, you talk about me as a dad, you know, to watch you do it all over again with your little man, you know, you got your, your big dog, <laughs> right. but now you got your little man and to see the smile that you always have when we talk about him or when you post about him, or if I see you at a game, you know, that love is just beautiful that we can find that kind of love in life and in business with family at a later age, you know, you're, mm -hmm. you know, we're both in our fifties and, early fifties and we're still enjoying life, man. And enjoying life probably more than when we, when you were playing probably more than when I was rapping. Like I just love life. I love, I got this appreciation for life. I wake up every day in full gratitude. One, every day that I woke up. Yes, bro. Every you know, day, every single day, man. It's amazing. You know, what's amazing to me is that I've been in this world since I've been 15 years old, like you 16, like been in the sports world. And I'm still amazed at what I see and how I live. Yeah. Places I go and travel. It, it never gets old to me. Never. It, it doesn't get. By the way, I told you I'm used to seeing you at the game. So if I'm at the game, we don't hear you because you're doing television. I, I I don't really watch too many games at home or Clippers games. Because right. usually I'm watching the games with you smoking a cigar. So. When I was home the other day and I actually heard you, I like heard you on television like for the first time. And it was talk about somebody having so much joy because we only talk about it. We talk about you. You're know, about to go to the game. And I'm that's, always that's like, it. all right, I got to catch this flight. <laughs> right. But to be at home and to literally listen and watch, man, I, I felt so much pride and joy knowing like, man, we are pretty much the same age on the same kind of journey of like opening new doors for ourselves but also just being great at our crafts, man. So yeah. congratulations to you, man. Well, I appreciate that. And before we go, two things. The best advice somebody gave you and some advice that you would give, and I'm just talking about a young person, but someone that's trying to search for what that next step is in their life. Yeah, man. The best advice someone gave me, man, that's a, that's a tough that's one, a, man. Right. Yeah, that one. Is it a nugget? Is it a, it, it could be a combination of a couple of things that may have had you, you think a little bit differently about maybe what you were going through at a time or how to see something a little differently. I think what I would probably, I'll go to the other one first, okay. man. What I would definitely say to, to some young person trying to figure this out is that, you know, be kind to the people that you meet on your journey. Because at the end of the day, like, even when you think about how my life changed, most of what changed about my life happened because I had met people along the way that I was actually just kind to. And those same people were the ones that were like, yo, I got an opportunity for you. Or I know someone over here that will help you with club quarantine to open the doors, you know. And, like, I tell people, man, like, I, I can talk about it now, but, like, CQ didn't happen without people that worked at, at Facebook Meta. Mm -hmm. But it was also from being nice to these people who, you know, I couldn't get the music played, you know, without Big John from from Sony Music Publishing. And, you know, people like that, that were that were in my corner to say, hey, what you're doing is changing lives, changing lives for people during a dark time. So just be kind of, you know, along the way to people. You never know where that will take you. Um, and then the best advice, man, that that, you know, probably one of the best pieces of advice that I got was from a woman named Vivian Scott Chu, who, you know, when my life with BDP was over, you know, I was trying to figure myself out and I would, I would go to these meetings and, and I would say negative things about, you know, KRS, mm -hmm. like, ah, oh, you know, uh, he should have given me more credit. And I was saying some real negative things about, and I was super young though, you know, 25 years old, and um and and uh, Vivian just told me you know how powerful the tongue is, mm. and to 
You don't want you don't want that to follow you on your journey. You know, you don't want that. And, and because of those lessons and because I was able to listen to people that were doing this before me and a lot older, you know, um, not that Vivi is a lot older, but just older people in, 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 you know, in different businesses, I was able to to thrive in this life, man, and find my way of being kind without hurting someone else. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't I don't have anything negative to say about anyone. Like, I'm good. Even when even when something happens, I truly try to see the other side of it. Maybe I made that mistake, you know, like, maybe, exactly. you know, go back to yeah. think about it. Like, man, maybe let me check myself too. Mm-hmm. you know, see where this energy is coming from. But that's the advice that I, you know, I would share with people. No, I love it, man. And the journey, the beautiful part of it is, you know, that health wise willing, we're going to continue to experience more and more and give back to not only our families, yeah. but indirectly to people around us that kind of live through what we're doing and what we're going through and be an example to, especially a lot of young black men yes, who are looking for some kind of guidance or some kind of direction on where they want to go. Cause I see you interact with people all the time that have questions. It's easy to shut that down, but you don't. And that's the beauty about life. It's the, we always talk about, it. it's not the ending. It's not the beginning. It's the journey. It's the journey. It's the journey in which we go through and learn. And more importantly, we can look at ourselves in the mirror today and, and really be honest with, and have an honest conversation with ourselves about who we are as men. And that part of growth for me, I've seen it. I've seen it in you. Yes, sir. And that's why we kicking and smoke cigars. That's why we do it, time. man. I love you, brother. Thank you for coming Thank through, you, man. It's been a pleasure. This is great, man. Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed part two of my interview with my brother, D. Nice. As much as I did, a lot of content, a lot of self-awareness, a lot of stuff. But before we got out, get out of here, it is Thanksgiving. I wanted to wish everyone a very safe and happy Thanksgiving. Uh, I know Thanksgiving means different things to different people, and that's okay. But it is a chance for you to get together with family and friends and sit and appreciate the time that you do have together, uh, support one another, have some good times, and do me a favor, laugh a lot, because there's a lot of things going on in this world right now that take us away from the joy. But being, being able to spend some time with family and close friends We kind of take for granted at times. We kind of segregate it to holidays. It should be done a lot more. But since we're here, we have an opportunity to take 24 hours and just really enjoy ourselves with our family. So enjoy it from me to you to everyone across the world. Enjoy your Thanksgiving. 